And people are snakes, man. And I'm telling you, these profane and vain babblers, what you need in America is men who have studied to show themselves approved unto God workmen that needeth not to be ashamed. But it's not just the sociological making the world a better place, kingdom builders standing up behind pulpits, babbling every Sunday, a bunch of nothing. Look at what he says in verse 17. Their word will eat as doth a canker. Of whom is Hymenaeus and Philetus who concerning the truth have what? They deviated, right? Here's truth. And you had two men that concerning truth erred. And this error, this error that they made, you know what it did? Look at what he said. What did it do? It overthrew the faith of some. So you had people Doing well, two men erred concerning the truth and some of these people had their faith overthrown by those two men. Now I want you to notice what their error was. Saying that the resurrection is what? Passed already. All they did was took a true Bible event and put it in the wrong place. You see there? Do you realize every person today preaching Matthew 24 as an application to the time that you live in has made this same error? Yes, sir. Do you know every preterist who says the book of Revelation has already been fulfilled has made this same error? Did you know every church of Christ who believes in, in, who's an amillennialist that believes that the resurrection of Revelation 20 has already happened is making the same error that those men made. Yep. All that, listen, is the resurrection biblical? Guess what? If you put it in the wrong place, it's now unbiblical. It's that simple. Right division. Studying to show yourself approved unto God. Not just jumping up and saying, Sabbath, Sabbath, Sabbath. Yeah, we know Sabbath is in the Bible, buddy. But why? What is it? What's it for? Water baptism, water baptism, water baptism. We know. Sit down, take it easy. We know it's there. Trust me, I've read Matthew 28, I've read Mark 16, I've read 1 Peter 3, 21, I know Acts 2, th listen, I'm not a dummy. But I'm telling you, you can take those true Bible doctrines and put them in the wrong place, apply them the wrong way, and make a mess of things and overthrow the faith of people. God don't need somebody that knows a couple of verses in the Bible. He needs men that take that book serious and love that book and have spent hours in that book studying it line upon line, precept upon precept, searching the deep things of God and learning and developing the skill of rightly dividing it so that they can teach it properly. It's a very, it's not, it's not a optional skill. It's the required skill in a workman that's going to handle the word of God. Amen. Look at verse 20. Two kinds of vessels. In a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth. Some to honor, some to dishonor. I hate to be blunt about what Paul's saying here. Is he saying you got vessels you drink out of and you got vessels you use the bathroom in. Every one of you got them in your house. Amen. There are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. And I hate to say it, in God's great house, there are vessels of honor and vessels of dishonor. That means there are men out there these, there are certain vessels out there that, that shouldn't be taken serious. Amen. 
Look at what he says in verse 20. If a man therefore purge himself from what? These, he shall be a vessel unto what? Sanctified meat for the master's use. There are vessels out there that have been purged and sanctified and are now meat for the master's use. What made them meat for the master's use? You can't forget verse 15. What prepared them for the master's use was studying the word of God to show themselves approved unto God, workmen that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Any other man walking around trying to teach the Bible, remember when Paul talked about the vain janglers? What did they desire? They desired to be teachers of the law. But they understood not what they say, nor whereof were they affirmed. And they were just like, you'd be, listen, Listen to the people teaching the Bible don't know how to teach the Bible is the equivalent of coming into a building and listening to a man jangle car keys in your ears for about an hour and then going home. It's vain jangling. It's just a bunch of empty noise. And Paul's telling them here, Paul's telling Timothy, he's saying there's one thing that's going to approve you and make you meet for the master's use, and that is to study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. Now, there's three prerequisites to this, guys. Three of them. Three things you have to have moving forward in order to become this approved workman. Now, you know, some of you may not want to be Bible teachers. That's fine. You still ought to study your Bible, right? But I'm telling you, if you want, if you want to be a, a man who labors with God, with that book right there in your hand, and do what I'm doing up here this morning, it better be t- taken serious, Amen. right? And there's three things that you have to have moving forward. It's required. It's a prerequisite, right? The first one is you have to have the word of truth. Because what is the skill required in you? Rightly dividing what? The word of truth. That means the word of truth is the very substance and subject of the work. Mm -hmm. God didn't say rightly divide a reliable translation. Mm -hmm. He didn't say rightly divide a pretty good one. He said, rightly divide the word of truth. The very work you are doing is rightly dividing the word of truth. If you ain't got the word of truth, I wish every preacher in America didn't believe the Bible they held in their hand would just sit down and shut up and find something more honest to do with their time. Now listen, guys, like I've already said, this issue is settled with me. It's the King James Bible. If it ain't settled with you, I don't care. It's settled with me. I can't can't convince the whole world. This is something, listen man, we can talk about manuscript evidence. I've got all the books over there. That stuff is a never ending, the battle of textual criticism and textual evidence and Greek manuscripts and Bible translations and Bible versions is an never-ending trail that you can get lost on. We can talk about it till we're blue in the face. You're going to have to prove that for yourself. I'm telling you right now, man, there's three things you need. You need the word of truth and you need the right motive. Study to do what? Shoe thyself approved unto God. That's personal. Yes, sir. It ain't about me and Shelton Smith and John R. Rice and Tom Malone, Bob Gray, Lester Roloff, Sam Gipp. It ain't about D.L. Moody, R.A. Torrey, Chuck Swindoll, John MacArthur. It ain't about any of it. I don't study my Bible to show myself approved unto any of them. I study my Bible to show myself approved unto God. Myself approved. I've got the word of truth 
My motive is right. I promise you my motive is right. I tell you what, if my motive was anything else, I'm just an idiot. Because the more I study that book, the more I set myself against man anyway. Amen? Care about a bunch of Baptists or Presbyterians or Episcopalians? Man, you can have all of them. I got a book here. And it ain't a Baptist book. And it ain't a Methodist book. It's the holy words of the living God. And I study it to show myself approved to him and him alone. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And if you, listen, you find men, you find men who do that. And if you can recognize them, if you can't recognize them because you ain't got any sense. Yeah. Because they're not hard to find. They're, it's not hard to to find that approved workman in the midst of all the profane and vain babblers. You know them when you hear them. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Dr. Ruckman was one of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't care what anybody has to say about him. I knew the first time I heard that man preach, he was different. Yeah. Yeah. And I tell you this about Dr. Ruckman and what separated him from all the men of his time. He believed the book he held in his hand and his motive was nothing more than personal approval to God Almighty. Yeah, you're right. You're right. And he spent his life studying that book. He didn't get it all figured out, but neither of you and neither of I. Yeah. And you don't just take God's workmen and the first time they make an error, just throw them to the wayside, man. There you go. Yeah. But I, I tell you, man, I've, I've heard these, I've heard men over my life that I know were approved workmen unto God. The third thing you're going to have to do, you believe the book? You want to approve yourself unto God? You're going to have to study. Quit trying to be seen of men. And get alone with God and your Bible and study it. Amen? Amen? I'm going to read y'all some verses here on, on this very issue. If y'all want to flip with me, you can. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 6. Deuteronomy chapter 6. Guys, I love teaching the Bible. I think Bible teaching is, is probably the most important office in the earth today. And I understand not everybody is going to be like me. I understand that some of you are just going to spend your time here learning the Bible and it's, it's preparing you on how to live your lives out there. I understand that. I don't expect every person nut job to be like me. What I'm telling you is if you're going to be a workman unto God, handling God's word, this is what he wants. Yeah. 